Hello, I am Don Mitchell. Welcome back to the 2000% Nation, the book that shows you ways that you can help contribute to a nation becoming at least 20 times more fruitful for God and His Kingdom. Uh, and we've been focusing in the last few uh, videos on ways that God measures fruitfulness. And in doing so, we've been focusing on just uh, a few measures of fruitfulness, specifically uh, spiritual, moral, health, emotional, and physical. In the last uh, few videos, each one has been discussed. Uh, now, for those of you who like to have a convenient summary, this video is going to be a great resource because uh, today I will be summarizing what we've been uh, reviewing in the rest of this first chapter of the 2000% Nation. Okay, so as we look at uh, these measures, uh, what we'll be doing, first of all, is looking at ways that, uh, you know, God has sort of directed us to think about this. And to do so, I'd like to begin by quoting the book of John, chapter 15, verse 16, in the New King James Version. For you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So let's summarize how God considers these five types of fruitfulness for him while examining a nation. First, from the spiritual perspective, uh, A, the number of saved people. B, how many saved people correctly apply the Bible while sharing the gospel. And C, how many how often, rather, saved people correctly share the gospel and how many unsaved uh, people uh, you know, receive it. Uh, second, we look at the moral dimension. And here we begin with A, number of moral acts inspired by the Holy Spirit that are occurring as described in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. B, the number of immoral acts due to the lust of the flesh that are occurring as described in Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 26 as well. From the health perspective, A, number of people whose health enables them to fulfill his callings for them, and B, how long these people have had sufficient good health to fulfill their callings. Fourth, from the emotional perspective, we begin with A, number of people who are emotionally able to fulfill his callings for them, and B, we look at the number of people who are able to lift the spirits of others to fulfill their callings if they are already believers or to seek him if they are not yet saved. C, we look at the number of actions taken to lift the spirits of others so they can fulfill their callings if they're already believers or seek him if they are not yet saved. And D, the number of actions taken to fulfill his callings and to seek him as a result of receiving emotional encouragement from Christians. Uh, and then in the physical dimension, we have an A, number of people who have enough resources to sustain a healthy, active life. And then a B, number of Christians who have resources they need to draw closer to God and fulfill their callings for Him. As a reminder of what to do, let me also summarize how we humans should be measuring these same types of fruitfulness through national polls and surveys conducted with samples of randomly selected people. Let me begin to get on the spiritual dimension. On the A side, explain to all people in a nation what it means to be saved and ask if they repented of their sins, uh, believed in their hearts that Jesus rose from the dead, and dedicate their lives aloud to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. B. Ask saved people how their lives and behaviors have changed since accepting salvation. C. Ask family members who know saved people well uh, what changes they have observed in increased good behavior and decreased bad behavior as defined by Galatians 5, 16 through 26. D. Ask non-family members who know saved people well what changes they have observed in increased good behavior and decreased bad behavior is also defined by the same verses in Galatians. And E. Routinely ask national samples of saved people how and how often they've shared the gospel message with unsaved people in their own families. And F. Uh, routinely ask national samples of saved people how and how often they've shared the gospel message with unsaved people who are not in their own families. And as part G, routinely ask national samples of unsaved people how and how often someone has shared the gospel message with them. Second, from the moral perspective, you know, an A item, routinely ask randomly selected national samples of people how often they have observed or experienced a list of moral acts, once again from Galatians 5, 16 through 26, 
done by others in the prior week. B, routinely asked for randomly selected national samples of people often observed or experienced a list of immoral acts uh, defined by the same verses in the prior week. Uh, C, routinely asked for randomly selected local samples of people often observed or experienced a list of moral acts, once again from the same verses done by others in the prior week. And we get into the D dimension, which would be routinely ask randomly selected local samples of people how often they've observed or experienced a list of immoral acts from the same verses done by others in the prior week. Then from the third, the health dimension, we look at A, annual physical examination supplemented by laboratory tests to measure factors to accurately describe the current and future level of full functioning, longevity, and ability to perform each person's calling from God. B, written information about what measurements the measurements mean and how to improve the underlying circumstances that lead to the measured results. C, national usage information about medications and therapies employed to ameliorate unhealthy medical conditions that limit full functioning, longevity, and the ability to perform each person's calling from God. Four, from the emotional perspective, we routinely ask a randomly selected uh, national sample about safe people's emotional ability to fulfill their personal calling from God to serve Him and His kingdom. B, then routinely asked randomly selected national sample of unsafe people about the frequency of receiving emotional encouragement that led them to draw closer to God. C, routinely asked randomly selected national sample of believers about the frequency of receiving emotional encouragement from Christians that led them to take actions to fulfill their callings from God. Then, uh, finally, from the physical dimension, would be the A uh, measurement is routinely ask each person about the availability of whatever they need to sustain a healthy, productive life. B, routinely ask each person about the personal habits that encourage or endanger physical fruitfulness. And finally, routinely ask Christians about the availability of whatever they need to draw closer to God and fulfill our callings for Him. Uh, in the next 14 chapters, we will examine how to make the necessary measurements to create the appropriate awareness of these measurements. We we'll begin in chapter 2, which will be the next video, about what government should and should not do in encourage and affecting. Fruitfulness. And I hope you'll be able to join me for uh, the next uh, video and that these have been a blessing so far for you. And I look forward to visiting your nation if I haven't already and observing the effects of your faithfulness in applying these lessons. Uh, in the meantime, may God bless you, your family, and all you do in the name of Jesus. Bye for now.